الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رحمة الله للعالمين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا وإمامنا وقدوتنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Welcome to our daily monthly reminders in Ramadan and today walhamdulillah we have reached the seventh of Ramadan and the title of today's kalima or reminder is ma'alimu tawheedi fi shahr as-sawmi ma'alimu tawheed fi shahr as-sawm the manifestations of tawheed in the month of fasting in the month of Ramadan. A tawheed, which is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the basis and the foundation of the call of all the messengers and the prophets of Allah azza wa jal. And it means to single out Allah azza wa jal with all acts of worship. Acts of worship which are both inward and outward, hidden or apparent. And this is why if you ponder and reflect, you will see that the manifestations, the various manifestations of Tawheed in all acts of worship, which Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded us to perform, these manifestations in these acts of worship are very clear and obvious and evident. Especially in the five pillars of Al-Islam. And from these five pillars is the fasting of Ramadan. For indeed, the manifestations in fasting during the month of Ramadan, the manifestations of Tawheed in fasting during the month of Ramadan are very clear and obvious and evident to the one who ponders and reflects. So inshallah we are going to there are many manifestations of Tawheed in Siyam, in fasting Ramadan. We are, very, we are going to look at just five of these uh, manifestations. The first of these manifestations is that we have been commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to fast with ikhlas, with sincerity, seeking the face of Allah Azza wa Jal and hoping for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man saama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama mi dhambi. The whosoever farts, fasts, whosoever fasts due to iman, True faith, wahtisaban, and hoping for the reward or seeking the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, whosoever fasts out of true faith and out of hoping for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ghufira lahu ma dhambi, then his past sins shall be forgiven. His past sins shall be forgiven. So here, the one who fasts, ihtisaban, seeking the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not for showing off, not for any other reason, 
but sincerely for the sake of Allah and seeking his reward. The second manifestation of Tawheed, Allah's oneness, in fasting the month of Ramadan, is Al-Muraqabah. And Al-Muraqabah means being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being conscious of Allah azza wa jal, in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times is watching you, is observing you, he is listening, he, he can listen, he hears everything you say, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees everything you do, he knows your inward state, he knows your outward actions. And this is again very evident in fasting, because fasting in fact, it is a secret and hidden act of worship as opposed to other acts of worship, as opposed to others, other pillars of Islam. So it is a secret. Fasting is a secret between a slave and his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, it's uh, very easy for someone to pretend in front of the people is fasting and really to not be fasting at the same time. How will anyone know that he's fasting? or not fasting. So he can, in front of the people, he can just uh, uh, pretend he's fasting. People will think he's fasting and in reality he might not be fasting. But despite that, he abandons food and drink and sexual intercourse and he abandons his desires and certain enjoyments and pleasures for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because of muraqabah. Because he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-raqib, the all-watchful, the all-observing. So therefore, he implements and actualizes and through this practice of his, this great, of act, this great act of worship called Muraqaba is realized. So this likewise is a manifestation of Tawheed in fasting during the month of Ramadan. The third manifestation of Tawheed during the month of Ramadan is that we see people of all backgrounds, all races, all colors, uh, from all walks of life coming together participating and taking part in this tremendous act of worship so we see the rich and the poor the old and the young males and females men and women all of them they abandon food and drink. They go hungry and thirsty and they refrain from certain enjoyments and pleasures all at one time during one, during one and the same month. To the extent that we see rich people who, yani, have a lot of worldly possessions. And he, everything is available for them. Food, drink, whatever they want to do, it's there. It's available for the rich people, for those who are well off in terms of the worldly affairs. However, they refrain and they withhold from enjoying or from Yes, from uh, practicing these enjoyments. They refrain from enjoying any of these things. From these enjoyments, they refrain from these certain enjoyments. Why? While they are fasting, they do this. All of this, all these people, they do this just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of submission to Allah azza wa jal and to please the one true God.
Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fourth manifestation of Tawheed in fasting during the month of Ramadan is that during Ramadan, two magnificent, tremendous and great historical events took place which are of utmost significance and importance for this Ummah. The first of them took place in Ramadan in the second year of the Hijrah of the Prophet wasallam, and that was the Battle of Badr, also known as Yom Al-Furqan, the Day of the Criterion, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly distinguished truth from falsehood. And on this day, and on this day, the Jundur Rahman, the army of Ar Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Ansar al Tawheed, and the people of Al Tawheed, by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal, they gained victory over the Hizbu Shaytan, over the party of the Shaytan, and the Ansar al Shirk, and the people and the followers of Shirk. As for the second event, which also took place in Ramadan, but it was in the year 8 after the Hijrah of the Prophet wasallam, and that was the Fathu Makkah, the conquest of Makkah, after which Makkah changed from being a land of kufr and shirk and disbelief and polytheism to a land of Islam and Tawheed and monotheism up until the establishment of the Yawa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued his house from the claws of shirk and from the hands of the mushrikun. And the flags of Tawheed flew high across Makkah in all corners of Makkah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And the fifth and the last manifestation of Tawheed in first the month of Ramadan is that at the end of the month of Ramadan, We are, we are strongly encouraged and we are commanded to say the takbir, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. So upon completing the month of Ramadan, we are to make takbir. And this takbir, it is indicative of what? of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is exaltation of Allah azza wa jal, glorification, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and declaring that Allah is the greatest, Allahu Akbar. Yani he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only true God. He Allah, he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one is the only one who is deserving of worship subhanahu wa ta'ala and with this we conclude today's reminder jazakumullahu khayran may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us al-ikhlas sincerity in speech and action and we ask Allah the most kind to accept our actions. Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa la alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.